Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever the hell you guys are located in this crazy world. As I keep on telling you, it's going to get crazier. It's not as it's crazy as just yet, but hey, people, I'm Al Ditton. I'm with Underground Noise Webzine. This is episode number 59. Please hit that subscribe button, like it, share it with your friends. I would really appreciate it. Today, I've got the pleasure of interviewing Benjamin Blank from the band called Binary Order. Welcome, Ben. Hey, how is it going? I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Um, it's been recorded on the 28th, and my album releases tomorrow. So I don't know when it's going live, but I'm quite excited for the release. So, yeah. That's awesome. First question I would like to ask you, Ben, is what inspired you to become a musician? And also, who are your influences? Um, it's actually quite an interesting question, because I wanted to become a journalist for the longest time I wanted to go into like video game journalism when I was younger and like studied that at uni and I was always making music as a hobby and it was something I was constantly sort of like being brought back to um throughout the years and um after a while it just became like less and less of a hobby and something I was putting more and more time into and like eventually it just became like the main thing I was doing so it was something that was, you know, since I first sort of took an interest in music, I was like trying to write it and that kind of thing. Um, in terms of my influences, I'd say the main one is probably like Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails. Um, definitely for like the way he mixes uh, the more rock and electronic elements is something I found like, really inspiring. And um, How it was like just mainly him as the songwriter and sort of like head of it is kind of um, what I was trying to do for a long time as well. Um, outside of that, it's like bands, because I grew up with the new metal stuff. So like a um, big fan of like Papa Roach, um, like Linkin Park and Limp Bizkit were really sort of influential to me when I was younger. I could, they kind of dropped off a little bit in terms of listening, but um, yeah, kind of that stuff really. That's really, really cool. Was the guitar the first instrument that you played? Um, it was actually bass guitar. Um, I learned the bass guitar because... All my friends at school were learning um, like rhythm and lead guitar or electric guitar, and um, all the bands needed like a bass player. And like I couldn't really get a drum kit because of like the noise and stuff. So I just ended up getting a bass guitar and um, just predominantly so I could be in like everyone else's bands and stuff. That's really neat. I see you have a bunch of guitars behind you. Which yes. one would you say is your favorite? Um, definitely the ESP. Um, LTD 1000, I think it's an M1000. It's the uh, yeah, it's my absolute workhorse. I use it for like mainly everything. I got it a few years ago now, and it's you know, whether I'm like just messing around, sort of like jamming out a riff, it'll be the first one I pick up, and it's the one that I always lay like the final riffs down and stuff with. Um, I absolutely love my uh, Telecaster as well. That doesn't get used as much, considering like the kind of music I make is more aggressive and um i think my esp is like down tuned to drop b where the telecaster is thinking like east standard at the moment so yes those two would definitely be my favorites yeah i really like that white one is that a seven string or is it six it's only a six string actually um it's i have got an eight string harley benton there um it's there's something wrong with like the neck intonation on it or whatever it is i'm not too sure um, so it doesn't get used very much, but everything's, yeah, everything's a six string at the moment. Okay. It's just, they're all just like massively down tuned. I figured I would ask just because it kind of reminds me of my seven string that I've got. It's an Ivan as GRG 7221. Okay. Yeah. I've always been quite interested in Ivan as I don't like, um, I think like that has got it as well, but I never liked headstocks on Ivan as I know it's like quite, um, a small thing to not like play a guitar with, but. Yeah, like, um, I've never actually played one. They're pretty neat. They're uh, pretty smooth, kind of like a BC Rich Warlock to me. Okay. Yeah. I've actually got a, a Squire BC Rich Warlock that's in the other room. Um, I think I did. it was given to me by um, a friend of mine. Um, like, I think he paid £50 for it or something back in the day, and I needed a guitar at the time. So, yeah, I've actually got one of those hanging around. £50? What would that be translated in American dollars? At the moment, I think it's nearly like, like I don't know, one for one. It might be like um, $60 maybe. That's cheap. 
Yeah, yeah, it's really cheap. Well, that's what he told me it cost. I don't know if it actually did, but... Well, can't go wrong with an inexpensive price for a piece of equipment that will get Definitely utilized. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. That's really cool. I also have an 8-string. It's an RG8 Ibanez. Okay, I'm not too familiar with the 8-strings because I tried... Obviously, the Harley Benton one was really cheap. I think it was only around 200 pounds. And, um, like, I just got it just to sort of try out the sounds and stuff. And I do really like that low tuning, but I think in terms of, like, songwriting, it's, like, a completely different thing um, to what I'm doing. Like, I'm more on the power chords and kind of stuff. And, like, with the um, the eight string, I found, like, you're playing that one string a lot more and then, like, moving around on the strings. It's what I found when I first picked it up anyway, and it's, like, just a complete style change, whereas, like, I thought I could just try and incorporate that lower sound into what I've got and didn't really work. But um, how do you find it? I actually found it pretty interesting because I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do a, a solo on this guitar or how yeah. I'm going to do a really crazy lead. So it's basically made for rhythm for me personally. But at the same yeah. time, yeah. it's really bassy sounding because of those real thick strings. You know, that F string just thumps really hard. Yeah, massively. It's, I, I love that sound. There's um like a band I listen to called Dally Thundering Concept. And mm -hmm. I think, uh, there's another band, Silent Planet, and I think they're predominantly like eight string as well. At least they've got some eight string stuff. But I'm not. I know Dally Thundering definitely does, and like the stuff that's been written on that, and uh, like the Doom soundtrack as well. If you know that video game, like all the eight string yeah. stuff. On there. Yeah, I do recall that. Amazing. Yeah, all, like, I'd say a lot of that's really influential, but like I don't write a lot of stuff that sounds like that. But it's more sort of like the attitude and tone um and aggression that i take from those kind of songs and try and put into mine that's really awesome because the eight string for me i kind of found it had a gent sound to it a little bit you know because it's got yeah. a gent 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 and people are like is that what you mean by gent i'm like yeah i guess so <laughs> i mean it's just yeah. that if you listen closely i mean if you're musically inclined you would understand the lingo behind it but some people are confused so that's okay. Yeah, like there's, I know uh, with my friends, there's a lot of like discussion about how to even pronounce um, the gent and like all this kind of stuff. But I think, you know, a lot of rock and metal music can get too bogged down in genres a lot of the time. Um, I've been getting not a lot, but like some comments about like my stuff isn't industrial because I've got, you know, acoustic songs on there and like this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, you know, I can't really give a, a genre for every single song so it's more like an overall thing and i think it's the same with the gent as well it's just sort of more encapsulated by that eight string sound yeah i can definitely dig that bands like Mashuga, i like those guys a lot actually i got um i've kind of been getting into them recently i've only sort of just started listening to them i think it was their most recent album it was like an orange cover that's got like um, a figure on the front and some of the tracks um because i have it on a playlist that just plays randomly and some of the tracks that have been coming on from now are like very impressive oh yeah my next question for you is this ben who came up with the name binary order did you think of any other names prior to that and also uh why did you choose that name? Um, no one's actually asked this yet, funny enough. Um, our binary order started, it was me and my brother, and he was writing and I was doing singing. And um, I we always had that name and like the collaborative aspect fell apart and I just sort of carried on with it. So there was never any other name. But um, it comes from a Nine Inch Nails song, um, this Year Zero, off the album Year Zero. There's a line in it, um, and all we ever were just zeros and ones. And I took that at the time to be like, all we ever were just zeros and ones, which is binary code, and it kind of like relating to the fact that like, if all we are is binary code, and bi like an order of binary is like life, essentially. And sort of like, I worked it around that way and sort of took the name from uh, that line and like I really like the name and I stuck with the name but I know that reasoning sort of sounds a bit daft now in uh, retrospect but yeah that's where it's from it's inspired by uh, Nine Inch Nails lyric right on I like a little bit of Nine Inch Nails music myself you um, got a favorite album of theirs I know people are really divisive on which um, one. I mean, it's downward spiral but outside of that like the fan base is really mixed 
I think that album was decent. It could have been a little bit better produced, I thought. Oh, Down with Spiral, really? Yeah. Okay. But it was okay. I mean, I like a few songs, because Johnny Cash, I don't know if you can listen to him or not, but he actually heard the song called Hurt. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm aware of his cover and stuff, and there's, um, I know online everyone says it's the greatest cover, and there's an article by Trent Reznor himself saying that like once co- um, Cash covered it and he saw the music video, it kind of wasn't his song anymore. But mm-hmm. I like Cash's version, I, I really do, but for me, it just it lacks the... The intensity and sort of atmosphere and um, sort of like haunting emptiness that the original has, and just basically just lacks the industrial elements. Um, but yeah, for me, Downward Spiral, when I first heard that album, it just completely changed what music sort of could be to me. Because up until that point, you know, I was hearing a lot of, um, you know, like uh, stuff that was on the radio, stuff that was popular, even though it was rock and metal, because uh, new metal was quite big at the time. But like Downward Spiral was the first time like an album felt, because it's a concept album, it just felt all encompassing and sort of really overwhelming um, me. And I think it's got some of the greatest production I've ever heard. And, you know, I know, I know some of the guitar tones on it probably aren't the best, but uh, yeah, it's easy to the run, I suppose. That's a good answer. Well, Ben, let's talk about tattoos. How many tattoos do you have, sir? I see you got some ink on your arms. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, got this is quite a new one recently. I've got like my shoulder done, and I want to get more of these, um, more of these down the back and sort of coming around. I think so. I've got all that on this arm, um, that on this arm, and I've got the shoulder piece. Eventually, I want to have that all connected, and like I want to get a lot more detail put in um, the triangle. That's on the front cover of the Barney Realder Mission from the Deep album. I actually want to get that on my neck eventually and this thing sort of going up there and just carry on with these crazy sort of like geometric cyberpunk shapes and eventually sort of get covered in it. I'm um, like part of me is like calling to get like a face tattoo, like just like a line that comes over there or something. But um, yeah, my, everyone's telling me it's a bad idea. But yeah, that might be like years <laughs> and years, years of like I don't know. I'm just obsessed with like the whole cyberpunk like looking kind of aesthetic, and you know maybe I'm going a bit too far by on my skin, but I think it looks cool. So, hey, whatever floats your boat, man. I think it's pretty nifty. I have a few tattoos myself. I got Rocky Wall. Okay, you turned it around this way. It says you all rock. <laughs> That's cool. My old band logo, Obliterated Soul, Zyphon, okay. and then an elephant. Because they're my favorite animal. Oh, uh, what animal is? Oh, is that an elephant? Yeah. Oh, that's well cool. Yeah, they're my favorite. So, how long ago did you get those done? Um, <laughs> I can't quite recall exactly, but all I do remember <laughs> that is that when I moved to New Mexico, I got two tattoos done. I got this one done, and then I got this one done. So, okay, mine are actually uh, cover ups. So I had like completely different stuff um, on my forearms and my shoulder. And, it was only a few years ago that I decided, like, I hated my tattoos. And it's like, you know, you're walking around with this stuff and it's, just, I really, really, um, yeah, just wanted to get them redone. And it's been like a slow process because it's like, uh, this I think like was a seven hour um, shift, the whole thing, that this was like five or six. This weren't as long, but they've been, you know, these massive cover ups and it's expensive and time consuming and, you know, if I knew someone that was a tattoo, it's still probably done by now, but yeah. Before I had uh, started the interview with you a couple hours ago, I got to listen to your band song called Beautiful. I oh, really... yes, one of the older ones. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was actually like the main single of the previous album. It's annoying because like there is some good stuff in my um, previous discography. I just think it's all... Like a lot, some of the production in the previous stuff is like just not where I'd like it to be. But yeah, beautiful. Um, I really like the chorus that's in that, and sort of like it was the sound I've got now. A lot of what I sort of like honed in on the new album really sort of took place in the previous album. You know, like the harsher vocals in the verse, and then like the more catchy, clean vocals in the chorus and stuff. Like beautiful is a good example of when I was sort of first getting that right, I think, from a songwriter's point of view. When it comes to recording, do you do the screaming first and then go back and do the actual singing part? Or do you... um, 
do you do it all all at once? In terms of the actual recording, I will try. I'll try and do it all at once. Um, but obviously, like the performance isn't going to be the best. So I'll go through and do like a rough mix where it's like me all at once, and then go back and sort of pick out the bits that need to be redone. Like some screams where I might have been out of breath a little bit um, because I'm doing the whole thing, or some of the, like the cleans that I'm not quite hitting right. And so it's it's really um, sort of a mixture of the whole thing. That's cool. What what drives your energy to keep going? I just I just love writing music. I just I can't like stop. Um, there's been points in my life where I shouldn't be writing music and I should be focusing on other stuff and that kind of thing. But I just I always come back to it and like um, I think I I just need a creative outlet. And I think it's it's the same for anyone that sort of you know writes music or does anything creative they need to have a creative outlet but for me everything else i've tried to do creatively it doesn't sort of feel the same uh desire and spot that writing music does i just i love everything about it i love like crafting the whole thing from like a, a music point of view and then i love like adding all the visual elements and doing like the artwork and getting that all right and then there's all like you know the lyrical aspect of something and you know, coming from that angle, it's just all encompassing. And I just, I'm just constantly like drawn to it. And I just don't, I can't imagine not doing it at this point. Do you have any hobbies outside of writing music? Yeah, um, they, they, they fall by the wayside a little bit compared to music because I try and engage in other stuff. But I'm, you know, this is my music room, obviously. And I'm always like coming back in here and um, I try and spend like around this time of year, sort of November, December, where I just won't come in here at all. And during that time, I um, I play video games a lot, not as much as I used to. Um, growing up, I was obsessed with video games. But um, yeah, around this time of year, I sort of like try and play the games that I've missed throughout the year. Um, there's one at the moment I'm playing called Returnal on the PlayStation. You've heard of it? It's, I don't think I have, but I played God of, I played God of War a lot. Yeah, my flatmate's playing that at the moment. Uh, that's probably one I'm going to jump onto next. It's I, I'm like I really like the old school sort of like more arcadey um, video games, like some of the fighting games, because they're good to listen to music while you're playing them. And one of the worst things about writing music is you can't listen to music while you're making music. So I don't get an opportunity to really listen to music too much um, as much as I'd like. Outside of that, I've started uh, reading a lot more. Um, especially sort of like a lot of the like cyberpunk uh, stuff I've been really getting into the Dune books as well I started reading uh, around when the film came out last year and I've become like obsessed with those so it's mainly just video games and reading at the moment that's really cool I don't read as much as I should but I, I might pick it up again someday who knows yeah I think it's it's like uh, it, I, I'm really, really into movies and I just, I found like cinema recently has just been one let down after another. And I just, I find it really hard to like find films that excite me. I'm a big Arnold Schwarzenegger fan, as you can probably tell from the shirt. Um, and I, I revisit a lot of like his um, filmography a lot, but um, yeah, like modern movies just don't really do it for me too much. And that's why I started reading, especially after watching Dune which I loved. And I was like, if I love this film so much, maybe, you know, if I get into the books, it'd be the same thing. And it was. That's really awesome. What's your local music scene like? You guys have a lot of bands where you're located? We used to um, a long time ago, but it's the part of London I'm in is very um, sort of R&B and hip hop um, based. I'm like the place I'm um, based in specifically is Essex. And it's just nothing but top 40 everywhere. There's not really uh, like a music scene or a band scene here. There was a long time ago when like new metal and um, a little while after that with like emo and My Chemical Romance and that kind of thing. There was like clubs and stuff. I mean, there still might be. Um, I'm not sort of going to like the youth clubs anymore, being 35. Um, but yeah, in terms of like the music that you hear and sort of see around here, it's very... Yeah, just sort of hip hop, rap, and R and B sort of faced. So, which you know, I don't dislike. Um, it's just like not something I'm really engaged with. My next question is a two part question. 
Okay. What's the shortest amount of time that it's taken you to write a song? And also, what's the longest amount of time that it's taken you to write a song? Well, recently, um, I had an idea for a song and uh, I ended up like writing it from it's, you know, it's, it's still just a demo at the moment, but like I've, I've got a thing, um, a whole thing where I can listen to a verse, chorus and a bridge. And I did that in like under a day. And that was like three days ago. I know I said I, I wouldn't be coming in here, but I had this just this song idea and it just it almost like wrote itself. Um, so that would be the shortest. And it's very it's very different to anything I've written before. And I think that's why I'm so excited about it and so um, able to put it together so quickly. And like, you know, because it was it's a different genre for me. And um, because of that, I've, I've you know, everything I was doing was new. So it's easy to put that together. Um that might, I mean, hopefully it'll be on the new album. Who knows, like, stuff gets scrapped all the time. So um, the longest it's taken me to write a song, it's, there was a, a song years ago on something I was writing around, like, the early 2000s, and it was a song called Till Nothing, and I just could not get it to work at all. And I, I always think about that song whenever I'm, like, struggling with uh, writing or a song that I'm working on. I always think back to like working on that song and just, I think that took me multiple years. And then in the end, it, it wasn't any good anyway, but like that took me a very, very long time um, to get together. Cause I think the reason I kept it is cause I liked the chorus and everything else about it was terrible. And so like, it weren't a, an issue with writing. It was an issue with like, I couldn't throw the chorus away but then I couldn't write a better verse for it. So, yeah, those things happen, especially when you got the writer's blog going on. I yeah, can relate, it was, I can relate to that. It was early on as well um, in terms of my writing, and I didn't, you know, nowadays I, I, I try not to, but I can fall back into like stuff that I know works. Like if I'm struggling for a chorus, I know, you know, four chords that would go together and put that down for now. And like back then, like, it was very sort of like I didn't really know what I was doing. And so I didn't know what I was getting wrong, um, as well as like it being writer's block at the same time with like trying to figure out what the next thing was. It was like a lack of skill and writer's block at the same time. So, For a person that's starting out on guitar, how often would you suggest that they change their guitar strings? This is, I've got a, a weird opinion on this actually, because I usually change my guitar strings like once a year. And what I was doing is I'd, I'd write demos and get everything um, to a point where it's like, right, I like this song, I'm gonna carry it forward. And then before um, I did the actual like final recordings, I'd buy new guitar strings for that. On this new album, um, I bought like all these new guitar strings and stuff. And it's like, right, I'm gonna do the final recordings. And it just, I like, they were just incredibly bright. And it was the same strings I had before. And I think I'd just gotten so used to the mixes. But, like, these new strings just sounded, like, terrible in the mix. And it was kind of like, I think I had to spend, like, about two, maybe three weeks just working these strings in again. Um, so, for me, I would say, like, someone starting out, change your strings whenever they break. Um Basically, um, if you've got a good tone on your guitar, you don't have to change the strings. Because I was in the mindset, like, oh, it's, if I'm going to do a proper recording, there needs to be brand new strings. But yeah, it was far more trouble than it's worth. What would you say is the oddest guitar tuning that you've played in? Oddest guitar tuning? Uh, I've only really done like E standard and then all the drops. Um, I've actually got the Digitech drop pedal if you know it that um i can't say i'm familiar show. yeah let's check out some of your gear that sounds cool yeah this thing okay yeah i'm not familiar with those yeah basically just um drops it was bought by um, an old friend of mine uh, as a present i weren't really going to use it when he first got it but i tried it out and it takes every single um string down half a step with like every change and so you can go down a whole octave and like I just use that now um so like my guitar would be in like drop B but then I think the song will sound better in like A sharp so then I can just turn that on and it'll go down by half a step 
so yeah like in terms of weird tuning i think like i'm just in drop b like all the time and just using this thing to like um go down that's really nifty i've never seen anything like that before so. it's, yeah it's pretty cheap as well it's um once because i got obsessed with guitar pedals at one point and once I did, every time I was watching a live video, I was like look, trying to look at the guitar pedal um, boards and stuff. And I I see this drop pedal a lot. There's a, an artist I like called Emma Ruth Rundle. I don't know if you've heard of her. Um, she done like a live thing like a year ago and she had it on a board. Um, there was someone else as well that had it on their board. So it pops up from time to time. Yeah, I'll have to check out Amazon, see if they got any good deals on them. So. Oh, it is Black Friday at the moment, or Cyber Monday, or whatever it is right now. So yeah, Cyber Monday. It's kind of funny because my last review that I actually did, I talked about Black Friday and Thanksgiving. So, oh yeah, all you shoppers out there, don't be hurting people. It ain't worth it. <laughs> yeah, we don't really. It's not really too much of a thing in the UK. Like it is online and stuff. Like I see all like the online stores, like Amazon and stuff. But in terms of like, you know, what you guys had with like some of the videos from walmart i think i saw like years ago with people like stampeding and then there's the whole south park thing about it as well we just didn't get that over here at all yeah it's kind of like a herd of elephants running through the store all at once scrambling for this that and the other yeah yeah it looked yeah it looked crazy it's chaos i'll say that much <laughs> <laughs> it's no fun because i actually participate in black friday maybe once or twice in my life and i'm like i've had enough of this i'm gonna stay oh, really? yeah i don't do well with too many crowds but yeah as what... i'm getting older i'm i'm definitely sort of liking crowds less and less um yeah i think black friday would just not not work for me at all like i, I don't mind paying the extra it's like if, as long as i'm not like squeezed into this situation it's like yeah it all depends on the crowd i'm actually with like if i can relate to the music scene like the show that i'm going to if it's a show that i'm not familiar with i'm not sure how am i going to react am i going to enjoy it or am i going to have an anxiety or panic attack who yeah. knows anything could happen at any time really yeah yeah it's um it can be like quite scary with like the live gigs and stuff especially with like the pandemic that was going on recently i know a lot of people were afraid of like catching covid and stuff coming out of it and but in terms of gigs, like, I know it sounds lame, but, like, I prefer just being in the seated area upstairs. Like, when I was younger, I did all, like, the mosh pits and stuff, and it's just, I don't know. Like, yeah, I just prefer sitting down and, like, watching the music. Like, if I could get, like, an armchair or something, that would be even better. Huh? But, yeah. Do you guys have any upcoming shows? Um, I don't actually play live at the moment. Um, it's something that I want to do um but like it's yeah I'm, I'm predominantly just like a studio um thing at the moment it's because like uh, body order is just me oh it's and only you yeah yeah it is actually just only me and that's why i did writing by myself because then i just didn't have to worry about that you know if, if i want to write a song or put a song together i can just do it i haven't got to worry about like you know getting in um the guitarist to do or the drums or whatever it did mean i had to learn to do everything by myself and for the longest time i probably wasn't great at different aspects of it but yeah i didn't realize you were just one man band that's like the guy that i just interviewed brendan jackson he has his own one man band called fetal involvement okay is that fetal involvement in involvement embalmment all right like, like you're embalming a body and i'm just like yeah that's okay the, that's one of the strangest names i've ever so like that kind of I, I i know it sucks and i get like a lot of um i've seen it in some of the reviews that have been out for messages from the deep as well is i like clean vocals too much i love that like when the chorus kicks and it's like this clean um thing and like there was a review that came out today and um it like called the album quite poppy and I suppose mm. it is in places because I am like clean vocals on nearly every, if not every chorus. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm a sucker for a melody. It's like, um, I'm a Slipknot fan as well, but I always love their stuff when like Corey's singing clean in the choruses, screaming in the verses. It just, yeah. Yeah, because when I listen to your song, Beautiful, I imagined. So, yeah. yeah. I like a lot of their stuff, their newest stuff. I'm just not too fond of it, but that's all right, you know. Wasn't there, like, I know there was a big controversy with, like, um, the singer 
leaving and then them carrying on like they had a new single recently and it was like the last one that he sung on or something yeah i heard that he's no longer with the band but i'm not sure what's happening other than that because i yeah, know I that think... dino dino the guitarist actually left for a little while and yeah. he came back to the band yeah, I know there was some kind of like someone was suing someone else or something like that, and the um the other band, uh, Soul of the Machine, I think that he's done. Like, I know that's the new machine. That album just rips. Is that good? It's sick. All right, I'll have to check that out then for sure. Yeah, like I said, it's the closest thing to Death Metal that they came out with. So I was really impressed with that album. Okay. Well, I'm almost out of time tonight here with you, Ben. It's been a pleasure talking with you this afternoon. Yeah, likewise. Do you have any last words for Underground Noise Webzing? Um, yeah, well, the album's coming out tomorrow, um, or it might already be out by the time this video goes live. Um, so yeah, like check the album out, leave a comment if you like it, leave a comment if you don't like it. Just you know, just appreciate any um, feedback, any listens I get. It's it's been um it's been fun promoting this album and doing the interviews like these and you know hope to carry on speaking to people that um enjoy it. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks again for your time today, Ben. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Metalheads across the world, keep your horns up, support your local music scene, support Ben and his project Binary Order. Support Underground Noise Webzine, The Metalist, Outcast Radio, and a lot more. Thanks again, everybody.